Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the AGV Tour Modular Flip Front Helmet. We've had quite a wait for AGV's new Tour Modular Flip Front to arrive, and now it's here. And after about 600 miles of riding in one, I can give you an idea of what it's like. In summary, it's an impressive addition to the premium flip front category with a few bits that make it stand out from the competition. But first, let's run through the essentials with it, what it's made from and how it's put together. The shell for this helmet is made from a combination of fiberglass, carbon and aramid fibers. The idea of that is to keep weight down and our scales suggest that's worked because this size medium weighs in at 1,607 grams. That's a very respectable weight for a flip front helmet really and in standard trim, it's lighter than either the Shubath C5 or Shoei's Neotech 2. It's also approved to the latest ECE 2206 safety standard. So the chin bar lifting mechanism for this helmet functions on this lever on the leading edge. It pulls down and that frees the chin bar to be lifted. The principle of that is that this button can't be knocked accidentally and that make the chin bar open up inadvertently. Now I'd say that's a pretty decent way of doing it. I quickly got used to the method of opening the front of the lid and it does seem to be protected from accidental opening as well. There's this chin curtain that comes in the box and fitting that doesn't interfere with the chin bar mechanism the way you lift it, which you can do on some designs of helmets. So while we're on the subject, I'd suggest fitting the chin curtain as without it, quite a lot of air ends up swirling around the inside of the lid. And that's especially the case if you want to use the communication system, which I'll get onto in a bit. As with all 2206 approved flips, the Tor modular is dual homologated so it can legally be worn with the chin bar open. Now you need to secure it in the raised position and that's a requirement for having dual homologation in 2206. Um, it's operating this locking switch on the right hand side. It's a very stiff switch and I needed my fingernails to operate that. There's no way I could move that switch in either direction without taking my glove off. So I definitely couldn't operate that while riding. So riding with a chin bar raised on a helmet like this is usually a bit of a pain as it messes up the weight distribution and it also means you can only use the sun visor because the main visor is behind the chin bar. So I'd say if you're hoping to use a helmet in open face configuration for very much time at all, then a flip over helmet would be a better bet as you'll get improved weight distribution and you'll also get use of the main visor. Venting on the Tour Modular comes through three inlets at the chin. There's one rocking switch in the center and then one on each side, which slide out to allow air through inlets on the inner surface of the chin bar. Up top, there's a chunky scoop with a slide-in switch that reveals three inlets down to the interior of the lid. Air can then travel through channels in the EPS liner and it can escape through 10 outlet holes between the EPS and the shell. So when I first wore this helmet, we were right in the middle of the record-breaking 2022 heat wave, so I couldn't really tell if the vents were open or not because any air coming through was hot air. I also hadn't got the chin curtain fitted, so there was plenty of air circulating around in front of my mouth anyway. Once the temperature cooled down a bit and I put the chin curtain in place as well, I could actually get a better feel for what air was flowing in. The venting's pretty good and it helps cool things down, but I don't think it's really on a par with the Shubath C5, which is the class leader at the moment for venting. The visor on this lid is one of the best things about it, actually. AGV gives some numbers for the peripheral vision. They say you get 190 degrees in this direction for visibility and then 85 degrees in this direction. Now, I don't need to protract her to tell you this, that the peripheral vision is absolutely brilliant in use. The pin lock insert covers the whole of the visible area. The only bit I could see was the blurry pin lock logo in my peripheral vision, but that was if I really strained to see if there was actually something visible. That insert's also a Pinlock 120, so it's the most protective in terms of anti-mist properties. And the pins are easily adjusted if you need more or less tension holding the insert in place. The visor's easy to change. You pull the lever on the side and off it comes. And it's also reassuringly thick. In places it's four millimeters, so that's twice the thickness of the average visor, but it still gives really crisp visual quality. There are six positions, fully up, two intermediate steps, one where the visor touches the bottom seal, then a locked cracked position and a fully locked position. So that locked cracked position is one I've only ever seen on AGVs. Once you get the visor resting on the bottom seal, you just push it a little bit and it hooks onto that mounting. So now the visor has a small opening to let through some air at the bottom, but it's locked in place so it can't just open up of its own accord. To release it, you push the button underneath to free the hook and then the visor will lift open. It doesn't take long to adapt to using that motion to lift the visor. The best way I've found is to push that button with the forefinger and lift the visor in one motion. There's a sun visor as well. It runs on this switch on the left rim of the lid 
and it takes a slightly firmer push to make it lower by the last five millimetres. So if it hits your nose, you can just stop pushing a little bit and the visor will sit a bit higher. The sun visor isn't anti-mist, which I think is a shame. In damp conditions with the curtain in, I did have some slight misting. So let's move to the inside. The interior is very comfortable and it's also very secure in the way it mounts inside the lid. It's made from two different materials of covering. There's a light, smooth material on the cheek pads that AGV call Ritmo, and then there's a brushed velour-like material around the head that they call Shalimar. The idea is to have the smooth material where you're sliding the lid over your head and your face a lot, and then the grippy material sits around the head. Whatever the intent of it, I found the lining very, very comfortable, and it also managed to sweat really well, which was handy seeing as temperatures got up to about 38 degrees. The top pad mounts into the lid in a pretty conventional way, but the cheek pads have a rail system. So they slide into place and then they secure in even more than that with four poppers on each pad. I've had the lining in and out of this helmet a few times now and it still fits very, very securely. Now, AGV make no mention at all of this in any of their promo literature, but there's actually an anti-roll-off system for the retention strap, which is something I've only ever seen before on Shoebuth helmets. The two straps run from the chin strap and they secure to the back of the helmet. You can see the rivets for it here. That gives a bit of extra security that the helmet won't roll forward and come off your head when you need it most. So unless you take the lining out, you'd probably never notice it's there, but it is in place, and I think it's a really good addition to have. So the final bit with the interior is the fastening strap. This might win me today's State in the Bleed and Obvious Award, but it does up with a micrometric buckle. Behind that lining, there's also accommodation for a comm system with a dedicated system available called AGV Inside. Now that's made by Cardo, which I find really interesting, personally, as it's the first helmet I've reviewed that has a Cardo collaboration when all the others have been Senna. That costs $289.99 on top of the helmet, and it has both Bluetooth and mesh comms protocols, so it's a pretty advanced kit. Now, for once, I was able to test this helmet with the comms system fitted, and it fits really very neatly into the helmet. The battery slots in behind the neck roll, just here, and the control module slides in to replace a cover on the lower left side. I found the buttons a bit tricky to locate, but it uses Cardo's voice control, so it's not really a big issue, as you can just tell it what you want it to do rather than having to press the buttons anyway. I actually went touring with my other half, who had a Cardo Pactalk bold on her lid. It was very easy to connect the two, the Pactalk with this one, but we actually found the connection pretty unreliable. And I had the chin curtain off, it was also hard to make myself heard because of the air disrupting the microphone and interfering with the sound. Putting the chin curtain in made clarity much better, but the connection quality was still pretty weak. We've used a series of different intercoms recently for these reviews, and this system was the one that's given us the most difficulty. So if you want to fit a universal comm system, probably one you've already got, then I would say it's not going to be the neatest installation because of the cover on the left rim, but there should be plenty of room for the speakers in the recesses as they're big enough for Cardo's 40 millimeter job as the ones that come with the standard kit, and they're normally the ones that won't fit into a helmet's recess. Last details before I wrap up, sizing and approvals. The Tor Modular comes in sizes from extra small through to double XL. AGV have done away with their quirky method of offering two forms of medium, now there's just one. Just get a medium rather than a medium small and a medium large like you got before. I wore the medium, as I do in virtually every other helmet, and I got on just fine with that. There are three shell sizes to cover the helmet size range. The smaller shell covers lids up to including medium. The large helmet gets a shell of its own, and then the biggest shell is shared between XL and double XL. There are also four thicknesses of EPS impact liner, so you shouldn't end up with a massive helmet on a small head. In terms of approvals, this meets the new, tougher ECE 2206 standard for the road, and that's definitely a plus point for this helmet in my opinion. To meet that newer standard, lids have to undergo a wider range of tests than before, both in terms of different impact speeds and also across more of the helmet's surface area. In my opinion, it's a better standard and you can be more confident in the safety performance of a helmet that meets it. Okay, so let's give you the rundown on what I think of this lid based on my experience of riding in it. I spent 600 miles through red hot days, normal warm days, and also a day of really unpleasant drizzle and rain. And this helmet impressed me a lot, actually. The weight is decent, the lifting mechanism is easy to use, but still feels secure. The comfort lining is very pleasant, the venting's fine, and the visor, like I said before, is absolutely superb. The airflow inside the helmet meant there was a bit more noise than I would normally expect, especially when riding without the chin curtain, but it was never an annoying noise really in terms of pitch or volume. And again, that's just my personal experience on a Suzuki GSX-S 1000 GT. And as always, I can't say what the noise would be like in another rider's particular set of circumstances. I found enough in my time with this lid to show, I think that it's worthy of consideration when you're looking at top end flip front helmets. And really it's gonna to have to be as the tour modular prices start at 449.99 in plain black. 
I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the AGV Tour Modular, but if it doesn't, then that's what the comment section's for. So if there's anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.